seven employee who had access to the board and w was giving reports to the board, at least orally. The final point on this, I would like to get everybody's um, uh, commentary on if it is true that they essentially um, were forced, Twitter was forced by the Indian government to put a government agent on the payroll. I think agent means spy. How explosive is that? And then how many that, other countries? That to, me, that to me is the most important thing that is not getting nearly enough coverage. It's like you had a government come to a company that's based in America. And it's not, it's not the United States government that did it. And basically said, we need you to place an agent of our intelligence services inside of your company. And it seems like they were like, okay, where do you want them to sit? Now, Sachs, if that's true, would I wonder if they would be required to tell the CIA and our government that their arms being twisted? Like, this seems unprecedented to me. And know. if they didn't, that's... well, I mean, I think, if true, I think the again, bigger... this is all alleged. So, but I, if I true, think, Sachs, what I think the bigger, but no, but Jason, you should also ask the next one, which is if they did it to Twitter, which is kind of small, what about the big honeypots of users? Apple, Google, Apple, yeah. Google, Facebook. Wow. TikTok, Snap, and what about com countries outside of just India? What about yeah. uh, the United States? No, yeah. I mean, what about the United States? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we have access to the stuff, you know, through the courts. There's supposed to be a process. Warrants. There's supposed yeah, we to have be warrants. the process is you go to court and you get a warrant. Not that it's a high bar, but uh, a prosecutor has to go show probable cause and get a search warrant, present it to the company, and then they turn over the data. This, you're you're right. It's Explosive in the sense that what they're saying is that these government agents, this is what Zacco says according to Time magazine, the purported agents had direct unsupervised access to internal information. So, which I think means DMs, when the accounts are created, who owned which account, the IP addresses, that's what I'm guessing they had access to, which is you you do not want to trust. I'm guessing anything. I'm guessing what don't it, put I'm, anything in your DMs, folks. I'm guessing what it doesn't mean is the Twitter menu in the cafeteria. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, not that I mean, not that anybody's been to that cafeteria in three <gasps> years. Anyway, I mean, there's literally forty seven dollar olive they steak. Had, they had direct unsupervised access to the salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you the can basically <laughs> I think you you have to make an assumption that if if, what a shit if governments are doing this to one company, they're doing it to all companies. Yeah, but you would think right that I mean, no, but Google honestly, would put up a fight or Apple would put up a fight. But who knows? Really? You think they put really? up a fight when they went into China? The opposite. Don't you think they do the opposite? Well, actually, what they did was there's actually an even sneaker way to do it. What Apple did when they went there is they said, we're not providing cloud services in China. Uh, but all the cloud services are provided by this third party company. So then they could have plausible deniability. That's not what this is about. This no, no, is I'm just about, giving an example of how you I, this is. I the understand, trick. but I'm asking you a yeah. question. Do you okay. think yeah, that uh, foreign governments have put pressure on the largest American tech companies to place agents and do you think they exist in there? They've definitely put to so the first part, they've definitely put pressure. We see that obviously. Then the question is, would our would the would Apple or Google do this and not inform the government or not put up a fight? I don't know. Well, I think it's fair to say that the the Senate Intelligence Committee is going to haul <laughs> Twitter and have like a closed door meeting. And then the question is, you know, will they haul everybody else in? And is just is I, I think what what is what, a what is an important question is, is this a dirty gur kind of business tactic at the highest levels of every company? And we just don't know it and are typically not read into it. And we would never know in the absence of this whistleblower thing. And my question is, do does our government know that our companies are acquiescing to these governments? Well, that's been a problem for a long time, actually. So there was an um, op ed by a Microsoft executive talking about this a number of months back where the argument was, well, the government has to go get a search warrant to get your data from these companies, but these companies don't put up a fight like they don't. It's like they don't challenge the warrant at all. And why? Because they don't have an interest. They have an interest in, in being cooperative, right? The article is basically saying that if you're the subject of a search warrant, meaning they're going to Google to get information about Jason, the government should have a duty to inform Jason so that your lawyers can go challenge it. And that was the legal change that needed to be made. We had this conversation, I think, last year. That is a change that should be made because in the old days when the government would present you with a search warrant, they'd have to go to you because all of your documents were in your possession. They would be at your office, they'd be at your house. So they would come knocking on your door, give you the search warrant. You could give it to your lawyer, they could challenge it. That doesn't happen anymore. 
Now the government just goes and gives a search warrant to a big tech company because your data is in the cloud. But their argument is you don't own that data. The big tech company does. The big tech company has no incentive to fight the government. And they just get access to all of your data. And you don't even know well, it's, that it's you're being an, investigated. It's not an argument. You agree to that when you sign their terms of service. Yeah. The current situation is bad enough that essentially you have very little protection and rights over your data. But what's happening here, the, the allegation is even worse, which is that government operatives are working with the company in a way that provides them access and without them even hosts. getting a search warrant. Yeah, they I can just always... spy on their ex-girlfriend, their you know brother-in-law, whoever. They can just spy on a celebrity, do whatever they want. I'd always, assu- I'd always assumed that this was happening covertly, meaning like, look, if you're a tech company and you know you have a very bright, I don't know, PhD on a visa, and you hire that person to work in computer vision, I'm just making this up. How do you really know that that person is not an agent uh, of another foreign country? And obviously, the overwhelming majority are not. But once you have hundreds or thousands of people, you know, that, that you brought into your company, all it takes is one person. You know, for example, we just saw, I think in Apple, there were two people that were just recently arrested for stealing all of Apple's autonomous um, auto data and documents and design schematics and all of that stuff. And one of the guys was um, arrested right before he was trying to fly back to China. And so somehow they figured it out, they were able to get him, he was not a US citizen. But then another guy that did it was a US citizen, but both were of Chinese origin, it just goes to show you that the covert nature of industrial espionage is probably at an all time high, right? And I think that's that's a risk that every company has to manage and do the best that they can. But this is different. This is an overt risk. This we, is just an let overture in. and yeah. saying, open the door, give us a badge, we're coming in. And this is why I think you have to deal with this case very delicately and in a different way. Yeah. Uh, and for people who don't know, Google does what's called the transparency report, Twitter also has one. So they they do try to put out by category search warrants, subpoenas, etc. Exactly how many warrants they're getting and the, the tech companies are at least trying to be transparent about it to the extent they can. But this is going to lead to a lot of people moving off of the cloud, I predict. We're seeing and in fact, Apple is now storing your data. Uh, and a lot of your privacy information locally on your phone. And if it's encrypted, they can't hand it over as we saw with the um, the terrorist shooting in it was at San Bernardino, uh, where they couldn't unlock the phone and they went to the Israeli spy company to do it. So, you know, I think I think the companies here, at least in the United States want to defend their users, but this is could be uh, make people rethink the cloud. And I've seen a couple of pitches from startups. I think you're confusing issues. Of course, they're going to try to defend their users in the United States. But what if you have if you let somebody in to a different country and that oh, it's, yeah, not no, I, if, I, it's not as no, if it's not as if those not servers are not accessible. Issue. Yeah, yeah, I'm not confusing this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just talking about the United States here for a minute. I do think you're going to see people buy mini servers to put uh, or rent their own cloud services that are encrypted and impossible to unlock. And so look for that trend to come or more companies to encrypt it and say we don't have the keys to So isn't it crazy that like, you know, we spent the last 20 years pushing the cloud and the yep. thing that may actually unwind the cloud is just the utter lack of privacy that we all have now. I've just had like, we've just created these massive honeypots, where, you know, any state or non state actor can essentially just have an incredibly detailed understanding of who you are. Yep. And why because we weren't willing to pay five bucks a month for storage. (laughs) Everything needed to be free. Isn't isn't this part of isn't this part of the uh, philosophy behind decentralized services? That you know, a yeah, key crypto, part is, sure. is distri- yeah. I mean, I, I don't like using that term, but just decentralized services where the data doesn't sit on some centralized, enterprise-controlled servers, but the data is distributed either on a chain or in your phone or in some way. Um, you know, your identity, your information, your content uh, isn't uh, isn't centrally controlled, and that that fundamental principle may actually come to kind of bear over the next couple of years and decades that a you know, that model yeah that, that model is more appropriate for us for me and therefore the services that are built that way are going to win in the market the challenge is ultimately how do you finance those because those services right i mean they they, they don't well, have I as much of an you economic have to pay incentive f- you have to pay for them you know Consumers if you're willing to pay, to pay five you know or ten dollars a month for your privacy 
consumers are doing in Freebird. I, I use the Brave browser and VPNs, and these are becoming a major category. Uh, you hear it on podcast advertising all the time. Uh, DuckDuckGo, Brave. The v- VPNs are VPNs. like VPNs aren't just for hackers anymore. They're like real no. like. Um, You're bringing up something that I think that's really important, which is that, you know, over the last 20 years, for all of us, we've been building these products on the internet. We've actually done a little bit of a disservice because we've basically created these expectations of consumer surplus. And we've never given people true sets of trade offs. We've always said, oh, you'll get more. And it's essentially free. Because we'll back into an advertising model that that supports us being able to give you more and more for free. But it turns out that it has some real consequences. And I do think that not enough of us actually understand why privacy is important. But when you start to hear these examples, and it'll be important to see what what the true details of this Twitter situation are. I think that the pendulum starts to swing in the other direction where we say, okay, you know what, I'll eat out at Chipotle one night a week less. And instead, I'm going to reallocate that money to making sure that I have, you know, some amount of privacy, for, you can do it for 25 bucks a month you know, two or 300 bucks a year, which is a big number for, you know, maybe the average Joe, but it's, 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 it's being packaged and bundled right now. So that you're seeing the VPNs, the anonymous search engines, the browsers all starting to bundle, they're bundling a set, a suite of services. And so I, I think this is upon us now and consumers get it, and they want to protect their privacy. So and Apple has said, this is going to be our reason for you to choose our cloud is that we're going to put the local settings, we're going to put your data on your phone, encrypt it, we don't have access to it, use use Apple for this reason. Of course, they're also building a multi billion dollar ad business at the same time in Apple News and their App Store. So there's that I guess we should move on here. We'll we'll see what happens with this.